Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Every teacher knows that keeping students engaged in the month of December is not only difficult, but sometimes near impossible. So in today's Vlogmas video, I'm gonna share five easy engagement strategies that you can use in order to survive until winter break. We are gonna jump right into it. The first engagement strategy is projected fire. I don't know any other way to describe this, but what's great is all you need is a projector and a device that's connected to the projector and has internet access. So a desktop computer, laptop, tablet, doesn't matter. As long as you can project things in your classroom, you are ready to go. It is as easy as going to YouTube, searching for a video of a fireplace or a campfire and projecting it full screen in your classroom. Is, is it fake? Pam, yeah. Yes. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the magic of winter, Christmas, something. But the aesthetic of having this projected fire in your classroom instantly calms your students and they are just mesmerized. It is glorious. If you have not tried it, you're missing out. Now, one thing you do wanna be careful of, ads. A lot of these fire videos are an hour or even several hours long and they will have ad breaks in between. Let me just say, nothing kills the mood quite like having an Amazon Prime ad just pop up in the middle of your campfire. So there are a few workarounds. There are websites that will allow you to copy and paste YouTube URLs and it will display the video ad free. There also are websites that will allow you to download videos from YouTube and then you could play it just as a regular video and you don't have to worry about ads. I've also seen some hacks with the actual URL like up in the address bar. One of them is adding a period after the .com. So it'll say youtube.com, add a extra period after the M and I've heard that will allow them to play ad free. Another one is in the middle of the URL, you will see the word watch followed by a question mark. In between the H and the question mark, add in underscore pop-up. It'll say watch, W-A-T-C-H, underscore P-O-P-U-P, question mark. It will actually open up the video full screen and it should play ad free, but things on YouTube are constantly changing and some things work at some schools and not others. So you might have to play around with it, but take the time to do that before you actually play the video for your class. All that being said, I love this strategy because it's super easy. It's great for independent work because again, your students all just like calm down. They work quietly. I also love doing it after recess, especially if you live somewhere where it is cold, your students come inside, you project the fire, maybe you do a little read aloud, they come up to the front of the room. It's glorious and there's always those students who are like, oh, I'm hot now. <laughs> it's just a great time, super easy strategy. The second engagement strategy is to add movement. There are infinite ways that you can do this. I'm gonna share three different ideas that are specifically related to like the winter time. So the first one is like pretend ice skating. If you are doing something where your students are moving around the room, maybe you have task cards up and they're going from task card to task card, have them like pretend ice skate between the task cards. It sounds silly, especially if you teach upper elementary or middle school, there will be the students who resist it, but secretly inside, they are loving it. If you have a tile floor rather than carpeted, if you have like paper that is going to get recycled, you can give them two pieces of paper to stand on and it makes it easier to like skate between the cards it's a lot of fun. The second idea is a variation of four corners. Typically with four corners, you would designate like different answer choices for the different corners in your room. But another way to do this would be have your students do a motion in order to signal their choice. So for example, they're gonna walk like a penguin for one of the choices. Maybe they're gonna get on all fours like a polar bear for one of the other choices. Maybe they're gonna beat their chest like a Yeti. Like you can find different animal movements or other types of movements that are related to winter just to make it that much more engaging for your students. Clap like a seal, another one I just thought of. The last idea for adding movement is snowball on a spoon. <laughs> so you can break your students into groups. It works almost like a relay race. They will work together to answer a question and then one of the students in the group has to carry a snowball, which is really just a cotton ball, on a spoon around the room or down the hallway, whatever course you decide on. If you wanna make it harder, maybe 
maybe they have to hold the spoon in their mouth. Once they get back, they can answer the next question and it just repeats. The third engagement strategy is a snowball fight. This is a classic, it's a favorite of mine because all you need are pieces of paper. And it doesn't even have to be new paper, you can use recycled paper. You know when the copier like messes up? This copier is... working perfectly. Keep those papers for these types of situations. Now, if you wanna get fancy, you can go ahead and print questions or problems, whatever, onto the paper that you give to your students, or better yet, take some of the work off of your plate and have your students actually create their own problems or their own questions related to the content. Either way, once students have their paper with the question or the problem, they're gonna crumple it up, a little ASMR, <laughs> they're gonna crumple it up into a ball. Then you're gonna play music, maybe walk in in a winter wonderland, and your students are going to throw their snowballs around the room. I typically set a timer for anywhere between 15 and 30 seconds. So once they throw their snowball, they can pick up another one from the ground and continue throwing. I do recommend having expectations in terms of how high they can throw it, how hard they can throw it, because there's always those students who are going to literally chuck it as hard as they can. <laughs> Once the music stops playing, they will pick up whatever snowball is closest to them. Sometimes I throw in some extra ones so they're not fighting over snowballs when the music ends. And they are going to solve the problem or answer the question on the snowball they chose. What's great is this can be used for any subject. For math, I would love to have different problems, but each time the student picks up a snowball, they have to show a different strategy to solve the problem. So what's great is you can use the same snowballs for multiple rounds. So students throw it, pick it up, they solve it using one strategy, crumple it back up, keep throwing it, pick up a new snowball, they look at the first strategy a student used, they have to solve the problem using a different strategy. For vocabulary, you could do like a four square. So the first time they pick it up, students have to write the definition of the word. The second time they pick it up, they have to use the word in a sentence. The third time they have to write a synonym or an antonym. And then the last time they have to draw a picture. You also can do it to review different subjects. So science, maybe you are working on animal adaptations, each paper has a different adaptation. So camouflage and ear adaptations, eye adaptations. Every time the students pick it up, they have to name an animal that has that adaptation and kind of explain how they know that or why the animal has that adaptation. You can make it work for you, whatever subject you teach, whatever grade you teach, make sure you set those expectations, but this is a great activity to pull out when your students need a little bit of movement and you don't want a lot of prep. The fourth engagement strategy is shaving cream cream snow. Keep in mind, this one gets a little bit messy, but it's a lot of fun and it is worth it. Basically, you're just going to buy cans of shaving cream. I recommend getting the cheapest shaving cream you can. You're going to squirt a little bit on each student's desk or in front of the student if you're using tables. They are going to spread it around to cover the entire surface area and they then are using that like a whiteboard, but using their finger in order to draw or write. Obviously, it resembles snow, but once again, you can adapt this to any subject area. So maybe you project math problems up on the board and they solve it in front of them in the shaving cream. Maybe they are writing synonyms for words or they are even writing out like sentences or written responses just using their finger on the shaving cream. Just like with the snowball fight, make sure you set those expectations. If they have long sleeves, you're gonna wanna have them roll them up up and make sure you direct them to keep the shaving cream on the desk or table. The good news is it will still get on their clothes. It's guaranteed. Like they will lean over and they will just have stripes of shaving cream. It wipes off very easily and does not stain. If it falls on the floor, it doesn't stain. It actually will clean the surface. So the desk or the table, pencil marks come off, crayon comes off. It's wonderful. After about 30 minutes of them, you know, smushing their hands all through it, it just kind of like evaporates and dissipates and like there's barely any left. I usually just go in with like a wet rag and wipe it down so it doesn't get sticky. But an alternative, if that's a little bit too messy for you, I understand. You can get $1 cookie trays from the dollar store and you could do it in small group. So rather than it going directly on the table, you can put the shaving cream right on the cookie tray and then it's much easier to clean up after. The fifth and final engagement strategy is to use themed manipulatives. This is a great way just to change things up and kind of add a little bit of interest into an otherwise 
maybe boring lesson. I personally love using food. Obviously it depends on student allergies, but in math, I would use little mini marshmallows to represent the one blocks. And I would use pretzel sticks or carrot sticks to represent the tens or the rods. And then I would use like the pretzel snaps, the ones that have like the little grid on them to represent the hundred blocks. You could also use mini marshmallows in science to represent molecules. And maybe you're talking about states of matter. And so students are going to arrange the marshmallows in order to represent represent solids, liquids, and gases. You can also use the mini marshmallows in reading. Maybe you give students a paragraph that needs capital letters and they use the mini marshmallows in order to mark where those capital letters go or punctuation, again, adapt it to fit your needs. But I understand you may not want to use food, so there are other easy manipulatives that you could work in. Cotton balls are fantastic because they look like little snowballs. Q-tips, you can use little jingle bells. You can use like the foam stickers. I know. Amazon has like big packs of snowflake stickers and you can find other little trinkety items at places like Target and Michaels or even on Amazon that you can just incorporate in. You can even use ordinary items but in a way that makes them themed. So you could use toothpicks or popsicle sticks, which are very common items, but maybe students are going to use them to build snowflakes. And then once they build their snowflakes, they're gonna find the angles or the shapes that are on the inside. Again, this can be adapted just like all of them in order to fit your needs. But hopefully this gave you some ideas to just change things up, make it a little bit different in your classroom, but without a lot of effort, because I know you're tired. I know you're exhausted. My heart just melts with the sound of children singing. <laughs> Not really. I'm just tired. The days are short, I don't know. You're doing a great job. Winter break is right around the corner. I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Share this video out with any of your teacher friends who might also love it. And as always, thank you for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one.